And take a look at this art. All of this was created by the latest version of Midjourney, version five that was just released about a week ago. The type of stuff that people are creating thus far has just been nothing short of breathtaking. Yeah, the quality of the art is amazing with V5, but they've also made a few other changes. So in this video, I'm just gonna dive in and talk about all the new things with version five. So let's go. So first things first, go to midjourney.com if you have an account, click on the Explore tab and just get lost in here. I mean, like I said, the type of stuff that people are creating is just quite beautiful here with version five. And you can just kind of get a glimpse of what's possible. You can check out the prompts if you want to reuse some of those. So very impressive stuff here. You know, let's head over to the Discord and see the release notes on what V5 actually has. Here are the release notes for Midjourney 5 in the Discord here. Let's just see what's going on here. So what are the first ones is wider stylistic range, more responsive to prompting, much higher image quality, two times the resolution. So by default, V4 and predecessors of Midjourney rendered at 512 by 512. Now it sounds like they're gonna be doing 1024 by 1024. So uh, that leads me to believe that it'll probably be a little slower to render, but you know, the quality will probably be a lot better. I mean, you got twice as many pixels, so let's give it a try. Okay, so let's try something out here and let's just say photo of uh, elephant. And let's see what happens. I'm already on V5. You can see right here, it says V5. And let's just try to get a feel of like how long this takes. Okay, so here we are. And <laughs> immediately, I'm just really blown away of the, the detail and the quality in this elephant. I mean, it's, it's quite impressive. I mean, it's not exactly photo realistic, but then again, I'm not an elephant expert. I don't look at National Geographic and elephant photos to know whether it's real or not, but I mean, you could have put this in a textbook and told me that it was an elephant and I would have believed you. So this looks quite impressive. Uh, and then as far as like speed goes, it definitely took, you know, a little longer than before. In fact, I would say much longer, maybe even twice as long. Okay. The next one here is improved performance with image prompting. So let's give this thing an image, do some image to image and, and see how that works. Uh, it also says right here that you can pass in the IW flag, which is the image weight and control how strong that image uh, is going to influence our prompts. So do we give the image more strength or do we get a prompt more strength? So now you have control over that. So let's, let's give both of those a try and, and see what happens. Got a picture of Jamie Foxx. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's get this URL. So and let's do an image to image here. So we could just say that's paste in that URL. And then we could just say a photo of a man smiling at the camera while standing on the red carpet, something like that. And let's just run that without the image weight. Let's see what we get. We'll just run the same thing again so while this is running we'll just do the same thing i'll copy this prompt and what we'll do is we'll actually use the image weight flag so dash dash iw and we'll reduce the weight of the image to 0.5 so it's less influential and let's see what the difference is and then we'll also do it a third time uh, and we'll increase the weight of the image prompt and we'll see what we get so and we could do like 1.2 Okay, it looks like they all came back. So let's check out the, the one without influencing the image weight, just a standard image to image here. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it retains some of the quality from the original input image. You know, obviously we have a guy with a suit here, uh, you know, black jacket, white shirt, black tie. So, you know, other than his bow tie one, it's mostly the same. I have like a little burgundy tie here. I mean, even some of the facial features, I would say most of the men here are, in a brownish or tan complexion. So, you know, it's, it's trying to get there. Um, and, you know, obviously it kept into account the prompt as well. So we have the red carpet. So, you know, I, I would say that it did a really good job as far as performance. It definitely took longer than before, but that's mainly because everything's 1024 by 1024. What about the 0.5? So image weight is now half of what it was on the previous one. So as you can see, yeah, these images start to lose you know, their likeliness compared to the Jamie Foxx input here. So like black shirt, black tie, black jacket. Uh, most of these guys, you know, don't really resemble Jamie Foxx too much. They don't really have browner skin, uh, different things like that. So yeah, this, this changing this actually 
it's very helpful. Uh, you know, I can imagine people are gonna create some amazing things by being able to adjust this weight here. So that'll be really cool. And then on the other end, just cranking it up to 1.2, yeah, I can automatically tell that like some of these fake AI guys are a lot closer in similarities to Jamie Foxx than the previous ones. You know, his, his beard, his smile, his likeliness, uh, even this weird looking one over here. They're definitely trying to get there. So uh, it seems to be pretty effective. So another cool one here is supporting aspect ratios greater than two one. Uh, this is really cool because there's like different scenarios where I want to create art that just don't fit within the aspect ratios of something like mid journey uh, like for instance like a twitter banner photo or something like that where the aspect ratio is different so yeah let's give that a try because i think it'd be very interesting i wanted to add something to my twitter banner i was like i was actually doing this in mid journey but before i was trying to create like a futuristic basketball court but i ended up having to crop it because the aspect ratio wasn't ideal so let's try this now okay so it looks like we rendered some basketball courts here and wow i can just tell you right now this is exactly what i was thinking when i typed in this prompt and and, you know it really crushed this aspect ratio i mean given given the confines of the aspect ratio it created you know this wide angle shot of a basketball court which is really cool uh, i think this one's really the coolest one might actually use that in my uh, twitter header let's try another one with a different aspect ratio and let's say an aspect ratio of 9 by 16 which is like the default aspect ratio of like a smartphone so let's see okay yeah these are definitely 9 by 16 and super cute <laughs> the flowers have ice cream on them no this stuff is actually really cute but also very strange which makes it good so yeah and this other one we have here is for supporting the towel argument for seamless tiling so let's give that a shot so we can say imagine a brick wall and then we can say tile like this okay so then i'm just going to just pick uh, let's pick this first one. Looks interesting. So let's just grab that one. And I'm just gotta download it here. Okay, and then we can check to see if this was a uh, perfect towel or not. So we just drag this into this app here. And as you can see, it is definitely a perfect tile. So if you were making a 2D beat em up scroller video game and needed some brick wall in the background, here you go. You can, you can do it. <laughs> this is actually very impressive. So, wow, I'm, I'm blown away. Yeah, so one of the last things I wanted to talk about as I was reading is like uh, this, this bullet here. So the trade-off about the diversity of your outputs can be very responsive to your inputs. So what that really means is you should try to write longer, more explicit text about what you want, whereas like short prompts may not work as well. So I've been writing short prompts. So let's try to make a longer, more descriptive prompt here uh, and see, you know, what we can get. Wow, I am actually blown away by <laughs> what they have created here. It's like some Daft Punk uh, Genji from Overwatch type of ninja. I mean, they really did exactly what I described with the lighting as far as it being cinematic, with the bokeh in the background, the focus, uh, the reflective neon lights bouncing off of the street. I mean, the ninja actually standing in the middle of the street and then posing as if, you know, they are you know, extremely intimidating. So this is really cool. I'm very impressed with uh, Mid Journey V5 right now. So amazing. There's, there's definitely more to this uh, V5 update than what I probably covered here. Um, like, like I said, this is, like I said, this is really just the alpha. So, you know, they're still working on it. They're working on like default styling. They're learning uh, from the community. There's a whole Discord channel dedicated to learning the ins and outs of V5. If you head over to you know, the Midjourney website underneath the Explore tab, they still have the rank pairs where you can rank which one of these looks better. And it's basically V4 versus some version of V5. And this is gonna help them figure out the type of styling they wanna to add to V5. So it seems to be more of a bigger focus on realism. So if you know if that's the road you wanna go down, it seems like V5 is gonna be the one you use. Me personally, I probably like the V4 a little better because um, although the realism is cool looking and I love it, I actually prefer some of the more wacky stuff, <laughs> the illustrations and the uh, water paintings and some of the 3D renders and things like that. Uh, but yeah, if I was gonna do realism, it seems like Mid Journey V5 uh, is the one to go. So 
Uh, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, let me know in the comments some more things you want to see. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff in the future, so uh, stay tuned.